Hey everybody, welcome to Slash Bash, where today I am bringing you another Choosing Beggar Reddit video. If you are new to the channel, then please subscribe and help me reach my goal of 10,000 subscribers. In our first story, when you have a large group of friends, isn't there always at least one Choosing Beggar? Let's jump right in. My friends and I had a New Year's party to see in 2020. Everyone had to contribute, but we decided that since the party was going to take place in my house, I'll pay for everything up front and afterwards everyone can pay me what they owe. It would be easy to track. I knew all of these guys for more than three years, so it was not a problem. Also, they didn't have to contribute that much money since the only cost was for food and drink and it wasn't going to be a massive spread or anything. We had the party, there were 16 to 17 of us, everyone had a great time, the New Year's happened and everyone went home. By the following day, I had worked out the cost and showed them the bills. It worked out to be $15 per person, adjusting rupees to the dollar. Hey everyone, here is the bill. You can pay me cash or transfer me the money. I got various responses for everyone. Okay, here it is, I'll pay you in a week, that kind of stuff. But choosing beggar was different. Hey OP, I am not going to pay $15. It isn't right that I have to pay the same as the rest of the guys. I am a vegetarian, and so my food costs less. It is true vegetarian food costs a little bit less than non-vegetarian food. In our group, about half of the people are vegetarians, but they all understand that it's very confusing to customize the bill according to each person. Some people order pizza, some have burgers, some have a shake, some don't, etc. So it was crappy that Choosing Beggar was making it hard for me. No one else insisted on getting a discount or paying for their exact amount of food. And it isn't like Choosing Beggar is poor. He has his own car while he is in college. But I didn't really want to argue over it. Okay bro, you can pay $3 less than the others. Choosing Beggar was happy. I guess this is the kind of thing that makes a Choosing Beggar happy. Fast forward to the 15th of January. Bro, money. He was supposed to give me the money for two people, and I know that the other person already gave him the money to give to me. Bro, I'm not gonna run away, chill. Plus, it's just $27. Okay. We now get to the 3rd of February. Bro, can you transfer the money, please? Choosing beggar gets angry. What kind of person are you? Begging for a mere $30? I went to school with you. You know where I live. Why are you acting like this? It's $27. I know because you insisted on getting a discount, and you are making me act like this. I know it's only $27, but I had to collect money from 15 other people. You were the last one. It may not be that much money to you. It may not be that much money to me, but I am not asking to borrow it from you. I am only asking for what is mine. If it isn't that much, then just give it to me. Why am I having to wait for over a month? I never expected you to act like this, blah, blah, blah. It still took him two more days before he actually transferred the $27 to me. I know it's not a huge amount of money, but it still pisses me off when you have to ask for your own money and they treat you like you are the beggar in the situation. In story number two, a choosing beggar wanted $20, but a 30 minute walk was too high a price to pay for it. I saw something else on this sub just now that reminded me of this story. So this happened back in April when the realities of lockdown were starting to sink in. I'm fortunate enough to work from home, so my life experienced no interruption. But this one girl I know, she wasn't so lucky. Now she's known for making terrible life choices and has managed to ruin every conceivable aspect of her existence. Kids taken away, gets fired from every job, evicted from every apartment, ended up sleeping on couches, etc. Every time there are consequences for her actions, she is shocked and amazed, and of course, she had no idea it would happen. Well, yeah, the lease said no pets, but I didn't think they'd mind a couple cats. That kind of stuff. So I have very little sympathy for her at this point. Anyway, she messages me asking if I can lend her $20 to help her get by. Lend, yeah. I'll never see that 20 again. But while I may have no sympathy, I'm not a monster. So I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll help you out this once. 
Because of the quarantine, I'll leave it on the threshold between the storm and interior doors, and you can just come get it whenever. But instead of the thanks on my way that you might expect, she asks if I can Venmo it to her. Well, no, I don't have Venmo and I'm not going to sign up for a service just to give you $20. How about PayPal? Turns out she can't use PayPal because her bank account is overdrawn and she can't open a new account elsewhere because evidently banks check for that kind of thing. I again repeat that I'll leave a $20 bill for her. It's pretty unlikely anyone else will see it on the threshold. She was staying with someone that lived less than a mile away. It's broad daylight, safe neighborhood, she isn't disabled in any way, and everyone is inside quarantining anyway, and she wouldn't do it. She couldn't be bothered to put forth the token effort of a 30-minute walk to get $20. 15 minutes here, 15 minutes back. Then she asks if I can drive it to her instead, since it would take me less time. For one thing, I'm not so lazy as to drive when it's a 30-minute walk, and two, no, I'm not going to take time out of my day to bring you money. It's just 30 minutes. You don't have a job and you don't even have to come right now. What possible reason could you have to not come and get the $20 that you asked for? There wasn't anything, of course. She just didn't want to walk. At that point, I just said the money is where I said it would be. Either come get it or don't. It sat there for two days before I just put it back in my wallet. In story number three, a choosing beggar shows up to make a deal, but just happens to be short on the agreed price. I, an 18-year-old female, am moving out in a few days, and so I am listing some stuff to get rid of for a few quick bucks. One of the things that I was selling on Facebook Marketplace is a bike. It's a Huffy Cranbrook. It's basically new and was only ridden a few times. It has a matching bike helmet and a portable bike pump. The bike was a gift. The bike alone is $170, not including the helmet or pump, which were like $20 each. I wanted it to go quickly, so I listed it on Marketplace and in a few local buy, sell, and trade groups for $100, with the helmet and pump included. A few hours later, someone messaged me. He's a guy in maybe his 30s. We both agree that he would come by and pick it up in the morning. Well, he shows up and pays me the money in cash. But when I count it, there was only $75. I do a few recounts and he goes to get the bike from the open garage to load into his truck. I stop him saying, hey, there's only $75 here. You want to count it again? Did you maybe miss a few bills in your pocket? The guy gives me a kind of irritated smile. He says, we can just do the deal at $75. At first, I felt really anxious when he said that. No one else was home at the time, and I tend to be pretty timid when I can tell people are upset. But this time was different, and I quickly started feeling really annoyed and pissed off. I said, hey, can you let go of the bike? We agreed on $100, and this isn't $100. I have the texts. The absolute lowest I'll go is $85, but you'd still be $10 short. At this point, $85 feels like I'm being robbed stupid. He lets go of the bike and it falls over, which was kind of lame. I could tell he was frustrated because he started to raise his voice a bit. He said, there's $75 there. I never wanted to go above $75. This isn't even the brand I'm looking for. It's a Huffy Cranbrook. I was trying to stay calm. He was making me feel super anxious. I told him the brand name was in the listings title and you can see it on the bike in the pictures. I'm sorry if it's not the right brand for you, but that doesn't change the cost of this bike. It is $100. He didn't say anything, just went on his phone while shaking his head and like grunting and stuff. I kind of just stood there awkwardly because I didn't know what to do. He shows me a picture on his phone of a bike. It's not even close to what I have. The bike I have is like a boardwalk cruiser. He's showing me a mountain bike or some kind of BMX bike. I just kind of stood there like, huh? I just handed him his money back. Then he thanked me for wasting his time before he left. And that was it. That was my first experience on Facebook Marketplace. And it was a really weird one. This is John from Slash Bash. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video and want to see more of them, then please hit that subscribe button. 
We'd love for you to drop a like, share it with your friends, and we will see you in the next one.